Leicester City are experiencing one of the worst ever starts to a Premier League season ever. After nine games, they are currently bottom of the table with only four points. They've lost 14 points from winning positions. It's not looking good. Leicester City ain't Leicester Cittering anymore. But why? Behold, I will bring to you the great tactics board that can show you what Leicester City were good at when they were good. Brendan Rodgers is a really interesting manager. He's a bit more of an imitator than an innovator. But when things were good, he broadly wanted his team to attack really high up the pitch with attacking fullbacks. He asked his wide men to work sort of as inside forwards. Here's Harvey Barnes coming in. James Madison would come in. Hey buddy, how you doing? You want to crash the box and have a little shots inside? Yes, you do. Uh, you have someone like James Vardy. James Vardy? Who's James Vardy? I mean, Jamie Vardy. Uh, he'd come in. He wouldn't take too many touches of the ball and get involved too much in build-up, but when he would add a really nice exclamation mark on loads of attacking moods. You also had box-to-box -box midfielders like Jewsby Hall and Yuri Tielemans backing them up, really helping. So loads of player rotations, loads of ball circulation, loads of low crosses and whatnot, and loads of exclamation marks from Jamie Vardy. But key to this was your man, Wilfred Ndidi, your number six, working as a defensive stopper. He was the bedrock upon a number of systems that Brendan Rodgers used. So whether or not Leicester City were playing a 3-4-2-1, or were playing a 4-3-3, or were playing in the 4-1-4-1, as they've most recently been doing, it was indeed as the number six who was very often the person who was the bedrock before all the many attacking players went forward. That's when Leicester were good. But Leicester haven't been good for a while. And we can see that in the data. So what we have here is a chart that looks at Leicester City's non-penalty expected goals for in blue and against in red. This takes a 10 game rolling average since Brendan Rodgers came in charge to where we are right now. In short, you want nice blue spikes and you want your red to be quite far away from the blue. So when Brendan Rodgers comes in, he comes over, takes over from Claude Puel and really, really obviously training intensity. When Brendan Rodgers comes in, there's loads of talk about how the training sessions are really, really fun and interesting. The intensity is really there. Uh, and when Leicester City have their tails up at the start of the 1920 season, they really have their tails up. You may remember the time they beat Newcastle United 5-0. You also may remember the time they beat Southampton 9-0. Loads of long range shots, loads of interplay from people like Jamie Vardy, James Madison, and also Ayose Perez. So the attacking is going really well. Then lockdown happens and Leicester sort of drop off a bit. If you remember the 1920 season, they spend pretty much the grand majority of that season in the top four spaces only to drop out in the final weeks and finish fifth. A uh, bit concerning. 2021 20, happens and the attack isn't what it used to be, but the fence is still there. There are some spikes, but a lot of that has to do with injury and, and changes in profile, but Leicester are playing more like a Europa League team rather than a team with Champions League aspirations. And that's why they finished again, almost not quite there. Last season, hey, you want to play a fun game? Please tell me if you can spot when Wesley Fofana gets injured. It's right here. Look how that goals against really begins spiking. Wesley Fofana, really good centre back, pacey, quick, good on the ball. But when his injury happens, it's not just one single injury, it's also the fact that Leicester City's squad isn't that large. And the replacements Brendan Rodgers had to bring in for them were of not comparable quality to Wesley Fofana, causing loads of complications and loads more goals being conceded. You can also see the attack is beginning to tail off there. That's as injuries and other things begin to affect players like Jamie Vardy. And which brings us to the start of this season, where again, defensive quality. It's not looking good, Briv, and the attacking quality is okay. A lot of it's being anchored by the superb attacking prowess of James Madison, but things are a bit sticky. And that's because Brendan Rodgers only has a fixed amount of solutions to an ever-growing list of problems because his squad is uh, suboptimal, shall we say. What do I mean by suboptimal? Well, I mean, well, let's look at the Leicester City starting 11 for some of the games this season. It's okay. It's fine. It's good. There's a number of players in here who've been really good for a number of seasons. But that's kind of the problem. At a time when a number of top six rivals are getting better and better and better, unless they're sort of standing in place uh, where they should be trying to jog in place in, to keep up to everyone. They only signed one player during the summer transfer window. That was Wout Fares, and that was a late recruitment to replace the departed Wesley Fofana. There was also times last season when Fares was out, well, Fares wasn't here, and Johnny Evans was injured. That meant Wilfred Ndidi was pairing in centre-back with Daniel and Marte, uh, and ahead of them, they had Mr. Sumari as a defensive midfielder. This was aggressively okay. Wolfrey and Didi is not a centre back, and Daniel Amate, while he plays centre back for Ghana, is also preferred off as a central midfielder. These are two players that can tackle and can be quite aggressive, but they can be run around if not run through. Uh, Sumari was one player who's meant to sort of be the great successor to Ndidi, but he hasn't really kicked on. Uh, and in Jamie Vardy, one of his successors, Pats and Daka, also hasn't kicked on. This is one big problem Leicester City have had for quite a bit. Players who were supposed to have come in and really been the next stage, such as Soyuncu or indeed Yannick Vestergaard, 
haven't really hit any of the heights that Leicester's old core really, really had, um, which meant as the old core got even older and couldn't hit the heights they used to, the players that were supposed to take over are just sort of left Leicester sort of drifting and going further down the table. So the problems you have are lack of recruitment in a small squad and a number of older players that can't hit the heights to which they used to. On top of that, you get individual errors, which reveal a number of known weaknesses that teams are beginning to exploit more and more in Premier League games. For example, Leicester City are really bad at defending set pieces. No team has conceded more from corners since the start of last season than Leicester City. It's gotten so bad that they've brought in a new set piece coach, but things aren't going swimmingly. Here's the first goal they concede against Tottenham Hotspur in their recent 6-2 defeat. Uh, it starts from a really short, simple, short corner routine where the ball is eventually worked out to the corner of the penalty area. When that occurs, Johnny Evans and Valt Fez advance from the defensive line to be in line with this Leicester City player here. That implies that Leicester City are trying to play some form of an offside trap. But the issue is a number of Leicester City players don't join Johnny Evans and Valt Fez. Tom Hotspur very cleverly have put two of their best headers of the ball in Harry Kane and Richarlison towards the back stick. And Timothy Castagna is a little bit overwhelmed. So when the ball is eventually delivered in, Harry Kane gets ahead to it, 1-1. The next goal, let's see you can see, is from a different kind of corner. And this is a really good illustration of how really good training ground routines can be undone by a lack of application in a real game scenario. So Leicester City are defending in a combination of man-to-man -man marking. All these gentlemen here are in around the punting area and zonal in the six yard box here. One thing to note is they don't necessarily have someone defending the beginning of the six yard box here. Walt Fez is in an okay area, but you, perhaps you could be further forward. So when that in-swing corner comes in, he's the first man to get a head onto it. Sometimes you need a big guy to just head things away. Or it's not necessarily a big guy, but someone with a nice, big, strong forehead. As the delivery comes in, watch Eric Dyer. He's got his hands on his hips. He's saying, I'm not a threat. You don't need to worry about me, but you do. It was him all along. Ah! The Leicester City defense is disorientated by one of the runners from the penalty area coming to near post, dragging away one of the defenders. And Eric Dyer gets ahead, clean head onto the ball. And it goes, loops over everyone. loop -de loop 2-1. The next goal that Leicester City concede is a really good illustration of how some of Leicester's best players aren't hitting the heights which they used to. Here is Wilfred Ndidi. He's one of the best defensive midfielders outside of the top six. In fact, he was so good, there was a legitimate point where people said maybe we should get rid of the top six definition and just call it the Magnificent Seven. But Ndidi had some weaknesses in terms of progressive ball carrying. He wasn't necessarily the passer in this Leicester City team. Those responsibilities tended to be more Yuri Tielemans. In this scenario, he's receiving the ball from back three, which is something Brendan Rodgers' Leicester City do a lot. I can illustrate that via the tactics board. So when Leicester City are trying to engage in team build up, play it short and progress through the thirds, what tends to happen is you've got your two centre backs here will tend to split. Uh, obviously the opposition, Tottenham Hotspur, are trying to advance on them and try and get some form of pressing effort. But the idea is to get the ball to Wilfred Ndidi and Ndidi can then take the ball, pass into someone like Dewsbury Hall, pass into Yuri Tielemans. These are difficult passes, these players should probably drop a little bit deeper. Uh, but as the ball comes into Ndidi, he is not scanning properly. He's not looking at his six. Um, and something that's really interesting is the moment he receives the ball, Bentacor is onto him like a shot, takes advantage of a really sloppy touch. Nabs the ball, advances quickly, and releases a really good shot onto Danny Ward. These are sort of uncharacteristic errors that are beginning to creep into Leicester City's game this season. Indeed, who's meant to be one of the more secure players in this Leicester City team, had a really sloppy touch here, and other players around him weren't really making Indeed live to the threat of Bentacle, who's onto him really, really quickly. The shot goes into Danny Ward, who is having a difficult start to this season, being Leicester City's number one goalkeeper. Leicester have conceded 22 goals of an expected goals against of 10.8, which is just one or two things. One, there's a number of long range shots that are going that probably shouldn't normally go in. So we're talking world-class finishes. Son had a fantastic hat trick against Leicester in this game with two or three goals that go into the sort of postage stamp areas. And two, Danny Ward is currently in a little bit of a funk. There's a number of shots going in that he would probably reasonably expect himself to get a hand to at a later date. He's a young goalkeeper and he's probably going to come good eventually. But at the moment, there's a little bit of teething problems here, which probably you know, is a feeling that is experienced by a number of these Leicester City players. The fourth goal comes about from James Justin attempts to overplay the ball in wide areas. If you look at the attacking shape, of all these Leicester players, they've essentially emptied out central midfield in order to overload on the left. This is what, how Leicester want to play, it's what they want to do. But there's a known vulnerability if you lose the ball in this area, in that it creates loads of space in the central areas for Tottenham Hotspur to flood into the space. Tottenham love 
transitional elements. They love flooding through central areas. And Kane and Son, they've got two of the best attacking players in the Premier League, if not in Europe, in terms of those transitional moments, flooding the central areas and great an attack. The fifth goal that Leicester can see is a really good example of how Leicester aren't able to play at the way they used to. When Leicester City were good, they pressed really high and aggressive. And when they lost the ball, they'd also counter press and win the ball back and create another transitional moment. Now, when Leicester City lose the ball, they don't get into that defensive shape in the same way they used to. So look at this defensive shape here. You've got Ndidi, you've got Vardy, you've got other players here, and that shows lightly pressuring the ball. Sure enough, there are caveats. It is the 84th minute. They are 4-2 down. But when this pass comes in, look how many Leicester City players it takes out. One, two, three, four, and five. It's not looking good, Brev. Far too easy to pass through the lines. And then by the time the ball gets down to Son, Leicester's defense still is at sixes and sevens. This should ideally be a back four with all major areas covered, but it's a back three. You've got no one here covering your left wide, your wide left attacker here. James Justin here is in a really difficult situation in that he can't pressure Son because that gives Son a really easy out ball to Royale, which means no other and no other player can also pressure Son because that opens up other gaps elsewhere. Leicester aren't properly aligned. If Leicester had managed to get into defensive shape quicker and higher up the pitch, they wouldn't have gotten to a situation where Son has one of two very good options as to how to attack the ball. Son eventually has a fantastic shot that gets him his second goal of the game. So what happens next? Are Leicester City going to get relegated with a lower points total than Derby County? And it's unlikely. One thing to consider is Leicester City have already played four of the top six already. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is still a really highly regarded manager. Steven Gerrard says he's one of the best man managers he's ever had. He's well renowned amongst many members of the LMA for being, and he's deeply respected by his peer group. He's also kind of expensive to sack. This is a situation that Brendan Rodgers should be clever enough to find his way out of. He once said that football management is akin to trying to land an aeroplane and building at the same time. One of the big problems with Brendan Rodgers right now is that he has publicly talked about wanting new recruits and wanting extra funds in order for Leicester City to continue their development and really try and get into the Champions League spaces. But players he has brought in he doesn't appear to trust 100%. You've got figures like Soin Chu, Vestergaard, Dennis Pratt, who aren't really getting that much game time, uh, and other players like Sumari, who haven't really wholly taken on responsibilities from players like Wilfred Ndidi, Pats and Daka, who should, or at least was originally envisioned to be the Jamie Vardy replacement, hasn't really kicked on and hit the heights that you would expect from a player who was so heavily scouted. Leicester City are in a really interesting position. It's a really good example of how expensive and how difficult it can be to become a Champions League team in the Premier League. What you're now seeing is a team for Leicester City that is close to mid-table, which considering they've got the ninth highest wage budget in the Premier League, is probably on track. When Leicester City were good under Brendan Rodgers, they overperformed, both in their attacking numbers and their defensive numbers. Now those numbers are bottoming out a bit and they're declining through the Premier League table. They're gonna be okay. But now the question is, is okay enough? If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.